So we are on the back of 12.5 worksheet number one. So we're still gonna be using the same skills of factoring here, but we're taking it one step further. Now we have an equation equals zero, and we're gonna figure out what numbers actually solve this. But we're gonna do it through factoring. Now you can use the quadratic formula, um, but we're practicing solving using factoring. So on the test, you can go ahead and use the quadratic formula to double check your answer. But to get credit, you're going to have to solve it through factoring. So we have to learn this new skill. So breaking this down, you can ignore the equals zero for now. You're going to just try and factor this out. There's no leading coefficient, which is nice. So we know it's going to just be an A and an A up front. All we got to do is think of numbers that multiply to eight to make a six. So that's a four and a two. I also already know since it multiplies to a positive, but it's adding to a negative that I've got two negatives. So it's a four and a two, and it doesn't matter where I put them. You can double check. That's going to be a negative four, a negative two. That makes negative six. And when I multiply, it's negative eight. So this is factored and done. All I need to do now is figure out what numbers would I plug in to make this true. So to be true, when I multiply these two things together, I have to get a zero. So this whole thing or this whole thing has to equal zero. So what would I plug in here to make this whole thing equal to zero? It'd be a two. Because two minus two is zero. If you don't see it, just set that side equal to zero and set this side equal to zero and then solve it. So A equals two because two minus two is zero. A equals four because four minus four is zero. Either one of these would work. When I plug in the four, I'd get a zero here and I wouldn't get a zero here because four minus two is two, but it doesn't matter because once I create a zero here, zero times anything is zero. So just like with quadratic formula, there's two answers most of the time. So the answers are four and two. Okay, another easy one to factor, no leading coefficient. So I've got this negative 15. That's a five and a three probably. Five and three can make a two. So feeling good about that. It's going to be a positive two. So I need the five to be the positive and the three to be the negative. So positive five minus three gets me this. So double checking, m squared, negative three m. 5m, put those together, that's 2m, and then multiply to a negative 15. This all equals 0. What am I going to get in here? m plus 5, when does it equal 0? So solve it. That's when m equals negative 5, because negative 5 plus 5. You don't have to do this middle part if you can just see it. m minus 3 equals 0, you're going to add 3. m equals 3. So those are your two answers. Okay, on to number 15 now, a little trickier because we do have a leading coefficient. But it's two, so it's not too bad because there's only one way to multiply whole numbers and get a two, it's a two and a one. So we're gonna start off there. Now we're gonna start thinking about six. It's either six times one or three times two. Just looking at it, how am I gonna get to a 13? I think it's gonna be the six. Because I know one of these two numbers gets plugged in here and gets times by 2. So real quick, I kind of saw it. 2 times 6 is going to be 12, and then the 1 is going to get me 13. So I'm going to put the 6 here and the 1 here. All I have is pluses here, so I automatically know there's no negatives in this problem. So I can just go ahead and put the pluses. Double-checking myself, that's a 12n and a 1n, that's 13n. Perfect. I'm good to go. Now I just need to solve this. Set them both equal to zero and figure it out. So minus six, I get negative six. Minus one, I get two n equals negative one. Divide by two, leave it as a fraction. So n equals negative one half or negative six. 16, leading coefficient. So I need to put it out front here. The only way to make a seven is a seven and a one. And with my 4, it's either 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. Now, i got to end up with a 3, and one of these two numbers is going to end up getting multiplied by a 7 when I put it here. If I do 7 times 4, I'm going to be at 28. I'm never getting back to a 3, so the 4 is probably not going here. If I put the 1 here, I do 7 times 1, and I get 7. And then I've got this 3, and if I think back, that's going to go right here. And if you need to see it, you can write it in. So I'm going to get 7, and I'm going to get 3. And if I have a 7 and a 3, am I going to get back to here? No, almost, but not quite. So that's not going to work. What about the 2s? 
So if I have a 2 and a 2, I'm going to get 14 and I'm going to get 2. So something's not working out here. Let's go back to that first one. Oh, I see. I put a 3 here. Okay. So I was using the wrong number there. So where we almost got it to work, I just plugged in a 3 instead of a 4 for some reason. So we were talking about, well, what if this was a 1 and then I put a 3? But it wouldn't be a 3. It would be a 4. And then we actually are going to get the right answer. Because I can get a 7 by multiplying here and a 4 by multiplying here. 7 and 4 can make a 3. So I need a positive... 3. So out of the 7 and the 4, I need the 7 to be positive. I'm going to put the plus here and the negative here and then double check myself. And if, it, if I'm wrong, then just fix it. But I'm going to get a 7 and a negative 4, which will give me a 3. The rest of it will check out. Here's my 7n squared and here's my negative 4. So this is good. Now I'm ready to just solve it. Set each one equal to 0 and run it through. So minus 1n equals negative 1. Add the 4, 7n equals 4, divide by 7, so n equals 4 sevenths. So my two answers are negative 1 and 4 sevenths. Okay, down here, I know that's going to be a 3x and an x up front. What I don't know is, is it 4 times 2 or is it 8 times 1 to make the 8? Quick glance. I like the way this one looks right away because I'm trying to get to an 11 and I know I'm multiplying by a 3. And so if I can put the 8 here and get an 8x and then put the 1 here and get a 3x, 8 and 3 will make 11. One other thing I see is I'm multiplying to make a positive, but I'm adding to a negative. The only way I multiply to a positive and add to a negative is if I have two minuses here. So going back to what I was talking about, what if I put the 1 here and got my negative 3x, and the 8 here, there's my negative 8x, and then that's going to work out perfectly. So if I double-checked it, that's 3x squared, negative 3x, negative 8x, positive 8. These two go together to make this, and I'm good. Now, if you started with the 4 and the 2 and it wasn't working, you shouldn't get frustrated because it's not going to work. You plug in the 4 and the 2, doesn't work. You flip-flop them. Put the 2 here and the 4 here, doesn't work. Then move on to the 8 and the one until it does work. So you can't get frustrated if your first try doesn't work. All right, the better you get at this, you'll actually be able to start looking ahead. But until you're there, you just need to start plugging stuff in and trying it until it works. All right, so this is good. This is going to be the correct factored form of this. Now I just need to solve it. When is this going to equal zero? When is this going to equal zero? So add one, x equals one. Add eight, three x equals eight. Divide by 3, and I get 8 thirds, so x equals 8 thirds and 1. 18, I see a 7 up front. I like that. I know it's a 7 and a 1. A 4, it's not too bad. Those are my only two combinations I need to worry about. I need to get to a 27, though. 27. So the thing that pops out to me is i know seven times four is 28 and that gets me pretty darn close so that doesn't guarantee that it's going to work but that's a good place to start so i need the four to be here if it's going to get multiplied by the seven and then that means the one would go here and get multiplied by the n and so just thinking ahead a 28 and a one can definitely equal a 27. so this is perfect i just need to put my negatives and positives in the right place if it's going to be a positive 27 then my two combinations, the 28 and the 1, I need the 28 to be the positive and the 1 to be the negative that comes off. So I need the positive on the 4 to create the positive 28 and the negative on the 1 to create the negative 1. And you could run it through and double check it. 7n squared, positive 28, negative 1. They go together to make the 27. And then these multiply to the negative 4. All right, so because I was thinking ahead... How do I get to the 27? Ooh, 4 times 7 is 28. I got to this answer quickly. But if you started with the 2 and the 2, you would try it. It doesn't work. Then you'd abandon it eventually when it doesn't work, and you'd move on to the 4 and the 1, and you'd eventually get to the right answer. All right, to solve it out, you set them equal to 0, and you go. So this is minus 4, n equals negative 4, plus 1, 
divide by seven. And so n equals one seventh or negative four.